It is still Septandy, and continuing with that theme, today we're going to take a look at something for a TRS-80 Model 1. The Model 1 is a computer built entirely in the keyboard, but it is much more capable with the expansion interface, and it is connected to it with a cable here. It was very common for users of the time to load software off of a cassette, but in addition to more RAM, the ability to use printers, and cassette duplication ports, the expansion interface let you use disk drives. Now I don't have the cable here, but I did get it with the computer, but it isn't working, so I'm going to have to fix it. A word of caution though, there are two types of cables for the expansion interface. This video does not cover buffered cables, though it is possible this repair could still work for you if there is damage near the connectors. But if you're missing your cable, then you need to make sure you don't need a buffered cable instead. If your expansion unit has any of these catalog numbers, the warning sticker, or a cable coming out of the expansion port, then you need a buffered cable. There is a new replacement cable made by Ian Maverick that you can get if this is the case. He has a video that talks about it, and a bit more about identifying needing a buffered cable, so you should probably check that video out if you're missing a cable. My cable is the straight through ribbon cable though, but even these aren't totally simple because they are shielded on one side, which unfortunately makes them somewhat rigid, and the shielding is problematic for the connectors. The connector cannot be attached through the shielding, so the shielding has to end before that point on the cable. This leads to a difference in rigidity on the cable, causing a stress point, and on my cable it has broken there. Up close you can see all the conductors for the cable and you definitely shouldn't be able to see those, and on the other side it has completely broken through. They aren't even remotely touching now. Fortunately though, this is actually very easy to repair because this is a 40 pin cable, exactly the same as standard IDE cables. Now because there's nothing wrong with the connectors themselves, I'm going to remove them from the original cable and reuse them on the new one, and they're not too difficult to get off. You need to undo the clips on the bottom, which will then release the top clip. Now in this shot I'm showing pushing the clips towards the outside, but you actually need to push them towards the inside, as you can see from the way that the hooks are on the clips. Now if you do need a straight through cable and you're making a new one from scratch, you can try and find those connectors, though they aren't the easiest thing to locate because cart edge connectors like that aren't really that popular anymore, and 40 pin ones weren't that common. There are some still out there, but they aren't the cheapest, so getting enough to make the cable isn't going to be inexpensive. You can get a pre-made cable though from Ian Maverick and you can get it directly from his site as well, so if you need a new straight through cable you might want to consider that. But I'm going to continue on making my own cable so I can demonstrate how you do that. It takes a fair bit of effort to get the clip off of the connector because it's not really meant to be removed. These are supposed to be one time installed connectors but you can reuse them. After you do get the clip off though, you can just go ahead and peel the ribbon cable off of the connector itself and that's all you have to do. We'll go ahead and do that for the other side and then I'm ready to make the new cable. Ribbon cable connectors like this are going to typically have two rows of pins and they're offset from each other so you can connect the even and odd numbered pins to different sides of a card edge. In a lot of cases one of these sides ends up being ground for shielding. When you're putting the cable on you need to make sure you align all of the conductors in the cable with these pins. If you flip it over on the bottom you can see how they reach up and wrap around where each wire is on the cable. Wow I just noticed how far gone my original cable is now after I removed the connector. That's pretty bad. Now to put these connectors on properly you actually need some kind of crimp tool but I don't have one of those so I'm going to go use a vise to do it instead. The vise is going to work out pretty well, but you need to be very careful because if you apply too much pressure you're going to shatter the plastic clip. I'm putting the clip in between two pieces of cardboard here so I can soften the pressure a little bit so it's better distributed. You want to compress the connector until you hear those clips snap into place and then make sure you stop because it can't go any farther at that point. After getting to that point it was obvious that the pins in the middle hadn't fully connected with the ribbon cable, so I stuck the connector sideways in the vise and was able to apply more direct pressure to the points where it needed it. Again you need to be really careful when you're doing this. But after that it turned out terrific so I went ahead and did the other side as well. And with it all done the ribbon cable is looking good and I am quite happy with the results. The only thing left to do is to cut off the excess cable on the ends which 
just feels really wrong ruining this IDE cable, but it's way more useful as an expansion interface cable. And after plugging it into the computer, we can turn it on and test it to find out that it works just fine. I am very happy with this result, and it really wasn't all that difficult. If you have access to a vice, then it shouldn't be too much effort to make a cable if you need it. However, you may run into issues if you make your cable as long as I did. These cables aren't known for being all that great for signal integrity, so if you run into issues, try making it a bit shorter. There was a reason that the cable was shielded originally, and why they offered the buffered cable later. Although, I think my revision here comes after the buffered cable when they've sorted some stuff out, so it's, it, there's, it's really complicated with the TRS-80 Model 1. But other than that, that's all there is to it. I hope that this video was helpful to some people, and if you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon, but for now, that's it. Do check out other channels participating in Septandy, and I'll see you next time.